Hey, so if you're anything like me, then you've probably got big goals that you want to achieve. And if you actually want to be able to achieve those goals, then proper time management is key. So I know this because I went from being broke and hopeless as a 20 something year old at a video gaming edition and nearly dropped out of university. Then I was able to become an entrepreneur and through a lot of learning and hard work and trial and error, I was able to grow multiple businesses to over 100K per month in profit. So I know what it's like to be on both sides of this um, divide, I guess. I've seen what works and what doesn't work when it comes to time management. So today in this video, I wanted to run you through how I am managing my time on a daily basis and on a weekly basis. But rather than just giving you something that you can look at and copy, I wanted to give you the principles that I actually use to develop the system for myself so that you can go away and build your own system that works best for you, okay? So if you're just starting out or you're on your way and you're already re reaching success, I'm sure you're gonna learn something in this video. Make sure to watch through the end. If you do like the content, subscribe to the channel, click the bell so that you get these videos as they come out. Give the video a like as well. And as also, leave me a comment down below and just let me know what you would like to make the, me to make videos about because I'm literally making this because somebody asked me to. So you could, you know, your suggestion could be next. All right, so let's take a quick break and check out this beautiful sunset and then dive into my computer. And we're gonna talk about how to manage your time like a millionaire. Yeah. Look at that. All right, welcome to the war station. So we have a bit much up on screen here. I'll try and neaten this up a little bit. I'll show you my calendar briefly, then I'll talk about the, the rules and the principles that I actually use to develop it because it, you, you can't just copy this. You need to work out something that is gonna work for yourself or a system that works for yourself. So the rules and the principles are more important than, than what I've got up here, but um, I'll just show you this quickly. So basically I've got some key things you might notice anyway. Um, I've got everything planned, so my full day from waking, and you can even put in sleep hours. I used to put in sleep. I used to schedule my sleep in, sleep in my calendar. I don't anymore, um, but this is what this should look like, and this is a hypothetical one. You'll notice I'm gonna be releasing this video in December. I've set this for January, and so I actually don't use this right now. I'll talk about some, some previous and different schedules I've used um, when I needed to be doing different things because the type of work that you're doing really does dictate what this should look like. Um, and I'll show you some other examples as well. Basically, what do we got? We've got a we've got a wake up routine or a morning routine that's before work starts. We have times that are fixed and regular and they don't change and it will repeat every single week. Um, then we've got basically a segue into work, which is the pre-start. I can go through that later. And then we've got different types of work. And so this isn't like very, very specific work, but this is the overall picture of what this is gonna look like is you're starting the week with um, what I'll call deep work and I'll explain that in a sec. You're going through the middle of the week with like an errands day, I'll also explain that. Then easing into the weekend, you've got a deep learning also to be explained. And then you've got weekend. Um, so you can see it's just very regular, it's very routine. The idea is to change as few things as possible and it's full. So let's talk about the actual rules and principles. Again, this is the key thing that I want you to take away from this video, not what mine looks like, but actually what should yours look like and how are you gonna set it up? So if you learn anything from this, I hope it is these are rules and principles. So I'll maybe just zoom this in. By the way, I'm gonna put all of this up on my website as a blog post so you can just refer back to this whenever you want to. Um, as an aside, I'm actually creating this right now because I'm literally, I literally just created this specific routine for myself going into next year. Um, so I've, I've literally just been thinking about this today. So what are the rules and the principles that we need to use if we're setting up an effective routine so that we can manage our time effectively so that we can get the things done that we need to get done so that we can live the life that we wanna live. The first one is that everything needs to be scheduled in advance. Like I showed you, it's like it's done in advance. It doesn't change such that each week, more or less, real life interferes sometimes, but more or less, you know what you're doing on this day at this time. The more, the further ahead you can have that knowledge in your mind of like, okay, Mondays 10 a.m. is when I'm doing this particular type of task or this particular job, the more that you will actually be able to achieve the things that you set at those days and times. Um, I will simply leave you with the, I think it's the British Army or it's, a, it's like a military slang or military slogan rather. And it's the, the seven Ps, proper planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance. And that basically means that in, in general, whether you're an engineer or whatever else it is you're trying to be, an entrepreneur or whatever, plan, just like don't leave things to chance. You don't get up every morning and be like, hmm, what am I gonna have for breakfast today? You should know what you're having for breakfast. Ideally, if you're trying to achieve goals and your goal is not eating food, 
your breakfast should be as little as possible or as simple as possible and just like should not be <laughs> should not take up any thought in a day so plan as much as possible as far in advance as possible and then your performance will increase commensurate to the amount of planning you do so that's the first one uh, to schedule in advance next is to batch and prioritize so um deep work you know i didn't properly introduce it but basically deep work is a book by cal newport it refers to the concept of intense focus and concentration uninterrupted for extended periods of time i'm not going to go into it in more detail i will again i will have links down below where you can uh, explore this stuff further but in short i recommend you you read the book deep work by carl newport if i have a good summary i'll put it up on my blog as well but otherwise links down below or just go check it out yourself if you haven't already read it really good book but the the key things that you need to know here right now are you the deep work needs to come first. That's the most important work. It's going to be the thing where you get the most leverage for your time. So it's the stuff that matters basically. And it's the stuff that you really, you know, it's gold. You have to treasure it and treat it like treasure as such, which means that it needs to come first and you need to have sufficient time blocked out for it as well. And so it should be the first thing that you plan. It's not going to be the thing that you do on Friday afternoon before you finish up for the week. It's going to be the very first thing you do when you're at peak mental performance. So that might may change for you. For me, I find it tends to be in the mornings, um, earlier in the mornings, if I have my routine set up well. And just because we operate on weekly cycles from Monday to Sunday, you wanna have it earlier in the week rather than later. So you can knock the biggest thing off the list as soon as possible. So that needs to come first. And because deep work takes time to get into, uh, sorry, focus and, and, and flow takes time to get into, you need to allow a long interrupted blocks of, period, of periods of time. You can't just schedule 30 minutes of deep work for the most important thing, you know, on like a Tuesday afternoon or something expect it'll get done. You need like hours and hours to get into that flow zone, the, the flow state, and then to come out of it as well. So that's the first part of batching and prioritizing. Uh, you will notice as well that healthy habits book, bookend, I call it bookend, start the end of the day, uh, both, it's not just like get up and, jump straight into work. I actually have specifically planned an hour, more than an hour before I start work. So the first thing, wake, energize, meditate. I change this routine. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. What matters is that you have something that basically allows you to, to, to start the day in a good way. So I fall into the habit of just sometimes just getting up and getting on my computer. It's the worst thing to do. Block out an hour, whether it's gonna go, whether you're gonna go work out, uh, whether you're gonna meditate, whether you're gonna stretch, do yoga, something like that. Have a coffee, read a book, all of these things I like to do, uh, except probably working out. I don't really do that early in the morning, but it doesn't matter. What matters is that you aren't just diving into work, that you have this way of going from sleep, from the sleep phase, easing into the day, energizing yourself. Um, what are some other things? Getting sun exposure is a good thing. Sun exposure into your eyes, bright light in the morning is really good for, for uh, syncing up your circadian rhythm. That's something I learned recently. Whatever it is, have a fixed time where you get up from sleep, you wake up, you do this thing that's not work yet, you're not thinking about work, you're not um, stressing about things, you're not, you're definitely not just diving into the day. Have that. Um, and then at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we also have a wind down. So the deep work um, book explains a lot of this stuff. I basically have a ritual both at the start of the day, so that's the pre-start. The pre-start is where I'm doing my journaling. It's where I'm on the computer now. I might be still be drinking coffee or whatever, but I'm on the computer. The idea is that I'm going through another routine so that everything is normal and flows. Um, I will normally be journaling my thoughts down, whatever else, so I can clear out the personal baggage and get ready for the thing that I need to do next, whether it's deep work or whether it's errands or whether it's deep learning, or even if I'm having a day off. Um, when I start this pre-start ritual, basically, I will turn on a particular playlist almost every day almost every day, the exact same song, because that is a thing that, and it's just so you know, the song is Work by Rihanna. <laughs> and it just gets me going. It gets me into the zone just because I've listened to it every single day. I know that when I hear that song, I'm about to start work. And, and by ritualizing it, it pulls me from sleep into my, into my morning routine. And then that pulls me with the ritualization of it, pulls me into the work. And it just, it's a good mental flow. And then the same thing at the end of the day, It'll be around journaling, tidying up your notes, whatever it is that you need to do to separate the work day where you've been working really hard, you may be stressed and trying to solve problems. You actually do need to relax. And me personally, I'm a highly anxious person. So I have, I think it means I have high levels of cortisol normally. So if I am still thinking about work when I should be sleeping or relaxing, um, I'm, I'm just not gonna get the rest that I need to get. 
So there needs to be some sort of nice ritual or like cool down period, just like when you're working out, you should always stretch and do a cool down afterwards. Whatever that is for you, for me personally, I need to have notes tidy away. I need to feel like I know that the next day or the next week or whatever the period is that's coming next, I have everything in order. So I will try and plan the next day or make sure that everything is ready for the next day rather. And then at the end, something symbolic. Um, I don't have a particular song or anything I listen to, but you could maybe a drink, anything that like is a, is a subconscious trigger that, okay, work day is over. Now it's time to relax and do whatever you need to do after work and not thinking about work anymore. So that's, um, again, we're, we're, we're batching things and putting things in the right order, um, in, the, in the right natural order so that you can conducively basically be thinking about work or not thinking about work and, and whatever it is that you're doing, doing it as effectively as possible. So then that's within the day and then between the days. So I already talked a bit about deep work, but the idea is that you are blocking them as much as possible so that you can really do this. So in this day, if I've got 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., I do, the gym is more or less going to be there. I change that around depending on how I'm feeling. But um, what's important is that you ideally have at least a few hours to do deep work, at least like three hours in the morning. And then if you've got to do your, your errands or your mundane stuff, or that's you know like calling people that you need to call or whatever it is, you're just chasing up these little things. I'm calling them errands or it's shallow work. It's the stuff that isn't really important. And it's the stuff that takes up a lot of your focus and attention. And so if you start thinking about your errands when you're in the middle of deep work, or you should be in the middle of deep work, I mean, you're not going to be in deep work and you're not going to get the important stuff done. So as much as possible, have them on separate days. Um, this comes from deep work. It also is something that Tim Ferriss talks about. I'll leave a link to a really good video that he has um, basically talking about how he sets up his week. And I learned that directly from him, which is to just block out those days completely, completely separate so that you have this time buffer between the deep stuff and the important stuff, maybe the creative work, the, the building work, the, the high level thinking work, and, this, and the stuff where you just you know, booking appointments or whatever it is. Next principle is to design the environment. So I mean the physical environment here as much as possible. And this is a point that I had to write down because right now, I guess you can see it in the background, but like I'm in a pretty empty apartment. And so I'm thinking about this for the future for 2022 is what do I need to set up such that the each environment for the things that I'm gonna be doing works as best as possible. So for deep work, I've, I believe that that really needs to be in a closed off, for me personally, it needs to be in a closed off environment. So I need to have my office set up, which I'm in right now, but it's not properly set up. Um, so meditation as well. I just need somewhere where I can go and be like, okay, this is where I do meditation every day. I don't do anything else there. This is where I meditate. And that's what that spot is for. Um, so that the whole idea here is that everything just flows and feels as natural as possible. And you, it's almost like your environment and your routine is pulling you along. You're not trying to, force the routine is actually pulling you into it. And it should feel quite effortless when, when you get it right. So that's around the physical setup. Maybe for you, um, I think the problem with most, most people have a problem where they just have distractions and people, people can come and talk to them and distract them and get them out of that deep work environment. Again, you probably just need to have some closed off little space somewhere that's comfortable. And, and when you sit in there or when you stand in there or wherever it is you're doing, you know that's where you're gonna get the real stuff done. It's really important to design your environment. Uh, Ritualize, I already talked about that. And then schedule r and &R. This also is from that Tim Ferriss video, which I will, will link below or in my blog post. Um, schedule your r and &R. Plan the stuff in advance, at least for me personally. Um, and I guess I have a similar personality type to, to Tim. If it isn't planned, it doesn't happen. <laughs> so that means both in the longer term, so that's planning trips, get the stuff just booked in, pay, buy the flight. You can worry about the other things later. Or if it's a weekend away, whatever it is, plan it in advance, schedule that r and because your r and is arguably just as important as your work time for you to be able to work effectively, particularly knowing that deep work is the highest leverage time that you'll have. You need to be in a good state of focus or you need to be physically able to get into that state of focus. And if you haven't rested, if you haven't slept well, if you haven't got the, the, the healthy habits of bookending the days, um, if you haven't had your R and R so that you actually feel like you can do the work, well, you're not going to be able to effectively use that deep work time. So uh, the day split, I already showed you that just run through quickly. Me personally, because I've complete control of my days, this is more or less what I would like to be doing now. I'm going to show you in a sec what um, some previous setups would look like for me just when I first started doing this, because I had different, um, basically a different situation, different needs last year. Oh, sorry, not last year. Yeah, last year in 2020. 
to, to what I have now. So, but this is what I'm doing right now. So again, uh, basically separate days for separate things, deep work at the start of the week, most important goes first, errands, miscellaneous stuff that I need to get done. Now, deep learning is actually something that I haven't really seen anyone else focus on this. This is just all the time, and I probably don't need a whole day for it, but it's really just anything that is not specifically work, but is enjoyable to me. So that may be reading a book. For me personally, I just recently got into a flow state for the first time while I was reading a book, and it was amazing. Um, ironically, the book was called Seeing Like a State. But basically, every like paragraph I was reading, I was just these ideas were popping into my head and I was connecting them, connecting the words on this page to, to all these other things that I was thinking about, um, you know, unrelated things, but I could see these mental connections just forming and I was writing those like crazy. And that I think only happened because I was, I was on holidays, I had a clear environment, there's nothing to distract me. And I was reading that book for the entire day, basically. I was lying in a hammock and just reading. So that experience made me realize that deep work also applies to things that maybe you don't normally consider it um, being applicable to, like reading a book. Uh, so deep learning for me is an experiment. I, I'm, again, I'm not doing this yet, but I want to have a day blocked out to just learn. And I will pick what I'm gonna learn about in advance. So again, it's not just like I can wake up and I'm like, oh, I should be learning something today, what I'm gonna learn. No, I'm, I'm gonna know in advance what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna treat it just like a work day, like just like it's the most important thing that I've ever done in my life. How will I maximize my learning during this day? So that could be, I don't know, it could be anything. It could be learning skills, could be learning, um, learning a lot about crypto at the moment, just like picking a particular theme or a topic and dedicating the day to it. Or it could be a book that I wanna finish, like start and finish in the day, um, whatever it is. So that's that. And then, like I said, r, &R leisure, plan trips have to be planned. So this is my newly designed setup. I'd say this is optimized for where I am at right now. I wanted to just jump back to two different periods to give you an example of what it could like, it could look like, pardon me, if you are doing something else. So this sort of setup, I mean, this is where you, I don't personally have a single bottleneck or a single constraint in my business that I'm trying to destroy right now or trying to, trying to expand that bottleneck because I don't have a business right now. Um, and so that gives me, in one way it's good, in one way it's bad. In the, the good of it is that I have a lot of flexibility. So that's why I can have this, you know, only two days of work and then two days of just errands and doing whatever. And in the errands, by the way, that will also be, that'll be classes, that'll be appointments, um, going to meetings or doing whatever else, like whatever else I need to do on this day, that's just miscellaneous stuff. It could also be extra work or extra learning, but it's not as important for those days. Or it could just be chilling. I could literally just like sit for an afternoon and just read a book or something, but, um, uh, but the, the, my point is that I have the luxury of spending the middle two days of the week to just do those things. Um, and then also deep learning is another luxury day. So what I mean to say is that in a lot of cases, you can't just work two days a week. So this is one I wanted to show you. It's not perfect, but again, this is exactly how it was when I was first doing this and, and setting this up in the first place. The idea or the thing that I wanna show you here is that most of you will probably have one thing that you should be doing more than anything else. Like one priority, it could be called the main thing, you know, the number one priority, whatever it is that you want to call it, the, the bottleneck, the constraint. That's the thing where you really want to be focusing, ideally, all of your energies, but obviously we live in a, in a real world, we don't live in an ideal world. In this case, I wanted to show you in May 2020, so this was during the COVID lockdown, so I had a lot of time at home. I had decided that what I was going to do was uh, revamp my, my FBA Freedom Accelerator sales funnel, my marketing funnel, which some of you may have gone through or seen. And I wanted to do it in a really short period of time. And what that meant was that it was basically hundreds of hours of work and I had to do it in a really compressed period of time. And just the example here I wanna show you is like having all of the things that I, the same components that I showed you before for this upcoming routine, the wake up, the energize, the meditate, I, had, I was tracking my sleep um, hours then. You'll notice it's all, it's all wonky because I actually adjusted this based on what I was really doing. So it's, it doesn't all line up because some days I had a different wake up time. Um, but I guess the key thing here is that like everything's accounted for. So whatever it is that you're doing, it should be in your calendar. If you start putting things or leaving things out, well then you're defeating the purpose of doing it. Put everything in the calendar so you can see it, so you know what you should be doing at what time on what day. And then there should also be some main thing that you are that you are really just attacking above all else. So for me, in this case, for this week, it was build VSL funnel. Um, 
that's all I really wanted to show you here is this is what my calendar looked like when I first set it up. Uh, now let's go to, and I'll show you in a sec some uh, little hacks, I suppose, just some keyboard shortcuts that make this all seem more fluid and easy to use because um, they, do, they do make it easy to use. Okay, so now we're two months ahead and this is, I guess, a good example of when you really have one thing that you need to be doing, how your calendar setup can actually allow you to be managing your time down to the minute to actually just execute. So in this case, these were calls for the sales funnel that I had just set up for the FBA Freedom Accelerator. And I mean, this is probably the hardest or longest week that I've ever had in terms of work hours, but having that structure around it allowed me to execute and continue to execute for several weeks like this uh, and months, not quite to the same level, but also at a high level of basically sustained output. And you can see here, you know, same following the same principles, You've, I had my sleep time, I had my wake up, you know, transition into the day, same time every day. I was doing exercise, I think just at the nights because I was literally going from 9 a.m. until 6 or 7 p.m. every single night. These calls were around about 45 minutes each one. So I just, I can't remember when I was eating. I think I was just eating in the morning and eating at night. And otherwise I was talking to, again, maybe to some of you. Um, but having this calendar structure was absolutely vital at this point in time. And so really, I just wanted to show you this as another way that you could be setting up your calendar depending on your own routines and what you need to be doing. Okay, so again, my situation has changed between these three examples that I showed you and your situation will change also. So that's about it. I wanted to give you guys uh, some hacks or at least shortcuts that I use. I find these very useful. So let's get both these up and just go through them. So if you are gonna be using Google Calendar, here is one. I mean, you can just copy this list, but basically T is gonna to jump to today. Uh, just press it and you go to today's date, or you can go N and P and that will basically be clicking these arrows. So that's like this or you can hit the, this is to search, which then you allows you to type in whatever you want uh, and it works quite well. What else we can change to the day view. We can change to the week view, which I was in, month view, which doesn't work when you have lots of routines set up. That's one other thing that I'll just mention here. If you are using the month view, obviously like this is just pointless, you can't see anything. What you wanna do is have different calendars set up. So in this case, I actually had uh, routines, everything in routines. So when you remove the routines, you're just left with, and the calls were in Nomad Media. So I could remove this and remove that so that when I go to the month view, then I can just see whatever personal meetings or whatever else that I'm doing. Um, but otherwise using these keyboard shortcuts, then you can easily change between the views. So let's go back to week view. Uh, let's select the window first, go back to week view. Uh, C, new event. Okay, obviously you'll be doing a lot of that. Use repeating events as well. So that was one other thing I wanted to mention is like, if I click on this, it would be a weekly repeating event. So in here, we're gonna go weekly. Normally custom is the best and just go repeat every whatever period. You can select which days it repeats on and you can also end after, up at a particular day or after an X number of occurrences. Obviously for these routines, you just wanna end them never because you want them to continue, but you can use this too. Uh, what else we got? Backspace to delete. So select it and then just go backspace and delete. I won't do that, but actually I will delete it. But if I wanna undo it, then I would just press Z to undo it and it goes back. This one is also really cool. I just was doing it before, which is G go to date and then you just type in whatever date. So let's go back to 2022 and there we are. And then I can also go N and P to skip forwards and backwards. And that is about it. I have some resources and further reading. So again, you can get this in written format. Link will be down below, so you'll find that on my website. Um, links, this video from myself is also recommended if you're into time management and just being able to be more effective with your time. Um, that was a good video. This Tim Ferriss video, recommend that. I wanted to point out, uh, I do have my book notes. So I try and take notes about all the books that I write um, of varying quality, whether they're good or bad. And I'm uploading them now to my website because 
Some of you guys I know get value out of reading them. I have shared them privately with people before, but now they're gonna be all on my website. If you go to my website, milesdunphy.com, and then you can go to the book notes section. And I don't have that many up there right now, but my assistant, Angel, thank you, Angel, right now is uh, basically working on getting them all up out there. And I don't know, let me know if you find them valuable. I wanted to just leave you with this one, which I haven't mentioned in this video, but it's highly relevant to time management, to setting up routines and to just getting stuff done and achieving those goals that we always want to achieve. Um, here are my notes. I'll leave the link again. It'll be in the blog or down below. Um, and I recommend you read the book, obviously, but you may find this helpful as well to just get some, get some of the key ideas out. So that is that. Also, do sign up if you feel like it. And that's about that. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, if you haven't already, then make sure to subscribe, give the video a like. Do leave me a comment down below. I am purely making these videos based on what you say that you would like me to make videos on. So leave me a comment down below. What would you like me to make you a video on? And I will do my best to do that. Until next time, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.